Borderlands is a franchise that came from out of nowhere. When the first Borderlands game released, all the way back in 2009, I think it's fair to say that, that not that many people had great expectations for it. And this is down to the fact that Gearbox is known for making absolute garbage. But Borderlands turned out to be pretty darn good. Even though it had some elements that were not really fleshed out, it was still overall a good game. However, the sequel to Borderlands, Borderlands 2, was better in literally every way. Somehow the studio known for making garbage managed to make a game that is so bloody good and is one of my favorite games till this day. And then of course there's Borderlands 3 which uh, is kind of disappointing but still overall a good game. But in today's video I'm not talking about the three main Borderlands games. I'm talking about the ones that come between and after. That's right. I am talking about the spin-offs. You see, while the three main games are pretty critically acclaimed, the spin-offs are not. And in my opinion, for good reason. Because to me, the spin-offs are lazy. And in order for you to understand why I say that, I encourage you to join me as we dive deeper into the Borderlands spin-offs. Borderlands the pre-sequel is a game with a dumb name, but it is also a game that is pretty disappointing. And despite it being disappointing, it still manages to be a pretty decent game, which you know, kind of understandable if you just basically take Borderlands 2 and just slap a new skin over it, like, I don't know, say, Outer Space, it turns out it would still be a pretty good game. So, you know, there's that. But in the overall grand scheme of things, the pre-sequel is pretty lazy. Because this game is basically just a copy of Borderlands 2, except, you know, it's set in Outer Space. And in many ways, this game feels like a massive DLC to Borderlands 2. Now despite this game being a ripoff of Borderlands 2, it still has some unique elements to it. The first of these is of course the story. I think the story of the pre-sequel is pretty underrated. Again, I don't think any Borderlands story is really that good, but in comparison to a lot of the other game stories, the pre-sequel is probably the best one after Borderlands 2, which is really not that much of an achievement, but I think it is closer to the quality of Borderlands 2 story than it is to that of, you know, Borderlands 3. The story of this game tells the backstory of Jack and how he eventually became Handsome Jack. And I think overall it's a pretty decent story for a Borderlands game. Sure, it's got some cringy dialogue and very unfunny jokes, but you know, for a Borderlands story, pretty decent. The game's story also had some interesting plot points, which got abandoned by Borderlands 3, but nonetheless, I think it was still pretty interesting in this game. There are a lot of returning characters from the franchise in this game, and well, they are, you know, there. But a lot of the newer characters that this game introduced are also kind of just there. They aren't really memorable. The only character that really stands out in this game is, well, Jack. Because, you know, he's Jack. I do think that overall the story of the pre-sequel was pretty interesting, giving us some insight into Jack's story, which you know for that alone is an overall positive to this game. However, the rest of the elements in this game, well, that's where this game becomes a little bit disappointing. This game's environment looks great. Sometimes, the majority of the times, this game's environments are absolutely bland. I think in many ways, this game has the same problem Borderlands 1 had. A lot of the colors used for these environments are just so bland and very boring, making the environments look boring as well. And I think this is in contrast to Borderlands 2's environments. The step up for Borderlands 2's environments was insane, giving more color and more vibrance to the environments, making them look way better than it did, but the pre-sequel takes a step back yet again. And yes, the graphics aren't that impressive either, it looks exactly the same as Borderlands 2, despite this game coming out 3 years later. 
As for the missions and levels in this game, it's basically the same as Borderlands 2, except way less memorable. I don't really think there is that much of a standout mission in this game, it's just all pretty basic. And I also have to mention that there are quite a few missions, main missions, that feel like side missions, which is just kind of annoying, and again, adds to the lazy factor. Now the gameplay is where this game is most disappointing. Let's start with the thing that Borderlands is arguably the most known for, the guns. Most of the guns in this game are just taken from Borderlands 2. All they did was slap a new skin over these guns and call it a day. Now yes, there are some unique guns and this game introduced the laser guns which are uh, not really that great in this game at all, but still it's another unique thing that this game has to offer. Some of the guns from Borderlands 2 are thrown in this game and made much weaker. For example, the Unkempt Herald, which is now absolutely pathetic. Also, there are guns like the Varuk that has got a new skin, and the name of it now is a uh, David Bowie reference? Sure, whatever. And basically all the non-legendary weapons in this game are, well, basically exactly the same as they are in Borderlands 2, which again is another factor that adds to the lazy factor. The combat feels exactly the same as it does in Borderlands 2, except in this game you have the uh, outer space sections. I think that's what I'm gonna call it. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. Basically, there are areas in the game where the gravity is much lower, and you can't breathe in these areas, and you need an Oz kit. These areas make you run slower, which already not a good idea in a first person shooter, but also you can jump much higher, and you can use the oxygen in your Oz kit to glide in the air and do a butt stomp. Now I will say that the butt stomp thing is kind of cool, but the gliding thing is practically useless. I mean, you barely even glide, so what the hell is the point? And again, it just makes the combat feel way slower, which, in my opinion, not that good for a first person shooter. You also have a bunch of new characters to play as, and again, yeah, I don't really have that big of a complaint in regards to the characters, because I think they are pretty decent. And some of them are really fun to play as. Now I think looking at the combat overall, it's basically exactly the same as Borderlands 2. Not really adding anything new except for the outer space areas, which makes the combat worse in my opinion. But the rest doesn't do anything to really stand out or make this game feel more unique or fresh from Borderlands 2. And overall, I can say that this game pretty much feels like it's kind of a ripoff of Borderlands 2. Now, this game was not made by Gearbox, it was made by 2K Australia. But luckily for us, Gearbox was shifting up the gears, because they released Borderlands 3, and even though it wasn't anywhere close to being as good as Borderlands 2, it's still at least try to improve on most things and actually manage to improve some things of Borderlands 2. For example, the gameplay in Borderlands 3 was absolutely better than it was in Borderlands 2. And I think, despite the complaints I have of Borderlands 3, this franchise needed it to breathe some fresh air into it. And luckily for us, Gearbox was not going to make a spin-off that was going to be lazy and basically just a copy of Borderlands 3. They wouldn't do that. Absolutely not. Well, hello there. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is to Borderlands 3 what the pre-sequel is to Borderlands 2. A lazy spin-off that basically just copies all of the elements of the game that came before it. Let's start from the top. The story of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands feels very similar to that of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keeps DLC for Borderlands 2. And you might say that is intentional. I will say it is lazy. I will also say that the writing of this game is way worse than it is in Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, and overall the story is just way less impactful of that of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, making this feel like a lesser version of that of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. 
They even got some famous voice actors to voice some of the characters in this game. Did it help? Absolutely not, because most of their characters are just kind of there and, you know, kind of forgettable. So great job of that, Gearbox. Oh yeah, and let's not forget that they brought in the same voice actors and actresses from Borderlands 3 to basically play the exact same character as they did in Borderlands 3. Which, if you ask me, it's kind of lazy. Now one cool thing about this game is the fact that you can create your own character, which is pretty cool. You also have more than one special ability in this game that you can have at a time. And again to fit with the whole Dungeons and Dragons theme of this game, you can customize your character stats, which I think overall is pretty cool. When it comes to the environmental design, I would say that it's kind of unique. Some areas look like copies of previous games and DLCs, but there are some areas that at least look, you know, unique and it's not as bland as most of the environments in the pre-sequel which overall is a good thing. But when it comes to the graphics, it's exactly the same as Borderlands 3. And yet again, there is another 3 year gap between Borderlands 3 and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Now when it comes to the missions and the levels in this game, I would say it is way worse than it is in Borderlands 3. Most are extremely basic, forgettable and uninteresting. And then there is the factor of the side quests. Now this is one of those games that forces you to do side quests. And I think this is absolutely stupid. I want to find the person who thought it would be a good idea to do this and stick a golf club up their backside. Seriously, side quests should be that. Side quests. Quests that are optional and that you would want to do if you are really enjoying the game. You should not force the player to do it. And yes, sure, maybe this factor contributes to the whole missions and levels in this game just feeling tedious and boring at times. But my goodness, I cannot emphasize how much it frustrates frustrates me when games do this exact thing. Do not force the player to do side quests. Thank you. The semi open world areas has also been substituted for this. And yeah, I get it. It's meant to represent a board game, which, you know, fits with the whole theme of this game. But uh, it, it sucks. Chuck it in the bin. Get rid of it. Now let's move on to the gameplay, where this game is yet again basically a complete copy of that of Borderlands 3. The weapons are yet again basically exactly the same as it is in Borderlands 3, except they have cool skins that fit with the theme of the game. And yes, there are some unique weapons weapons that this game introduces and the legendary weapons are pretty much all unique but despite that all of the rest kind of just feels like Borderlands 3's weapons. Combat yet again feels exactly the same as it did in Borderlands 3. For me, the most disappointing element of this game is the variety of enemies, because my goodness, they dropped the ball on this one. Across the board, I would say that the Borderlands game's enemy variety is generally good, but this game is by far the worst. All of the enemy types within these games have additional enemy types within them, making the variety of enemies pretty good. And yes, even though these subset enemy types within this game are pretty decent, overall the amount of enemy types there are in this game is not decent at all. It's uh, pretty bad. And then of course there's the fact that most of these enemies kind of feel exactly the same as one another, and most of them don't really have all that many moves. Again, comparing something like the Psychos from Borderlands 3 to that of Borderlands 2, they have more abilities and more moves they can do making them more interesting to fight. But in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, most of these enemies just feel kind of boring to fight. They aren't that cool to fight at all. It sucks. And when all of these factors come together, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands just isn't that great of a game. It's it's pretty average. Sure, having Borderlands 3's gameplay is obviously gonna make the game feel good, but again, considering the fact that there's been no significant improvements in this game, it just makes the game feel lazy. And is why, in my opinion, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is the worst game in the franchise. Except for, you know, uh, uh, new Tales of the Borderlands, which, uh, d yeah, that, w that one is definitely the worst game in the franchise. But uh, we're not exactly talking about those today.
uh, Borderlands, a franchise that a lot of people would say is falling off. And maybe they have a point. The new Tales from the Borderlands was absolutely awful, and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands was not that great either. And the movie is not gonna do anything to, you know, add prestige to the franchise. But in this video, I wanted to focus on these two spin-offs. I know that Tales from the Borderlands and New Tales of the Borderlands are technically spin-offs as well, but they technically don't really count as games, in my opinion. Yeah, sue me, they aren't games. They are basically just glorified cutscenes that you now and then have to press a button on. And if you disagree with that, come at me. Now sure, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and the pre-sequel is not the worst games out there. The pre-sequel is still pretty decent in my opinion, and Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is pretty average. But... The thing is, I would much rather play other games in the franchise, and when I look at it, I think these games are, you know, kind of pointless. If they were never made and were never part of the Borderlands franchise, I don't think we would have been missing out on much. So I guess the overall point of this video was to say to you, uh, you know, basically just keep on playing Borderlands 2, because that's kind of the best one out there, and it's probably the best we're ever going to get. So yeah. And that is it for this video. I thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.